Well, here's one of my favorite motorcycles, but uh, it's uh, an example of rule number one. You can only control that which you create. And for those of you who are kind of interested in alternative thinking and alternative views, you may have heard the crazy idea that you don't have to have license insurance or registration. This is not entirely correct. If you can create a means of conveyance like this motorcycle, and if you don't register it anywhere, you can travel on it as you see fit, whether or not you have any other contracts out there. But if you did not create it, and the one that created it is not offering you the true and lawful title, they're not offering you the MSO, then you have to comply with whatever rules the one that created it establishes. So if they tell you you have to wear a blue shirt on Tuesdays, you have to wear a blue shirt on Tuesdays. And if they tell you if you're not wearing the blue shirt on Tuesday, there's gonna be a fine to pay, guess what? Those are the rules for using their creation. And unless they give you the full title to that, if they give you the true title to it, then you can make up the rules. And in fact, the first BMW that I ever picked up was prior to 1991. It was prior to the changes that have occurred in the Title and Registration Act. And you used to be able to pick up a brand new conveyance car, truck, motorcycle, and the MSO, the Manufacturer Statement of Origin, was available at those dealerships. And if you were paying cash, if you were not financing, if you didn't have an alleged lien holder, you could get the MSO, which is what I did. Now that particular motorcycle was different than this Enduro. It was actually a street bike. And in Germany, they don't really limit the speeds of the, of the uh, uh, traffic on most of the Autobahn. Some of it now, it's, they actually have speed limits out there. But what they do instead is they limit the maximum speed that a manufacturer can make a vehicle to travel on. So that motorcycle had a speed limit of 155 miles an hour and it was set by the fact manufacturer by BMW. And I, I had to, of course, test to see if it would really go that fast, which I did. And I got pulled over, as you might expect. And there was a brief conversation about, I need to see license insurance and registration. I was still learning this material at the time. I was still piecing together these rules. But I had a rough idea that having that true and lawful title meant that I didn't have to comply with the regular rules. And so I looked at the officer and I told him, I don't have any of that. And there was about a half hour conversation which started out with him being very upset and very scared and very frightened. And he came up to me and asked me if I knew how fast I was going. And I told him I didn't really know because my eyes were watering so bad I couldn't quite see the speedometer. And uh, this kind of disarmed him a little bit, kind of calmed him down a little bit and got into a regular conversation. The next thing he needs is three contracts. And we're going to get into three contracts later and why it's three and why that's so important. And when I told him I didn't have any of that, he needed to know immediately who owned the motorcycle. It's interesting that if you can't establish these three contracts, these, these three points of contact, the next thing, almost either innate or in his training, he wants to know, well, who owns the motorcycle? And I told him, well, it belongs to a trust, and here's the proof. And I happen to have the actual MSO with me made out to a trust. And he goes back to his car, and he makes some phone calls on the radio, and he comes back up, and he says, that I'm not going to issue any tickets today, but I need to know if you'll slow down, if you wouldn't mind slowing down. I said, sure, I don't mind slowing down. And then he says, listen, uh, as fast as I clocked you going, he says, my car would be like 15 miles an hour slower than that maximum top speed. He goes, how come you pulled over? You could have just kept going and I wouldn't have clocked you at all. I told him I didn't want to see him get injured trying to keep up with me. And it, this is all in commerce, right? I mean, we're not supposed to be injuring anybody else. But if we create it and we want to travel fast on it, there's nothing stopping us, right? Unless, of course, we have an agreement like a driver's license where we've agreed not to. The long and the short of it was that because I had the MSO, even though I hadn't created it, the one that created it did, get, in fact, give me the MSO. There were no tickets of all issued. There was a private agreement where I agreed to slow down so as not to create a threat or to injure anyone else. 
And that's pure commerce. That's pure, perfect commerce is the way that day ended. Now, that was before 1991, and that was before the changes in energy and the times we're living in today, which, as you know, right now, the might have ended a little differently no matter who had the MSO, right? Here's another example of you can only control that which you create. Uh, a lot of us have created babies or procreated them, maybe even spent some time raising them. This is a perfect example of how the rules of commerce apply. One of the things that I was observing many years ago was a woman who was on the news because she had already had five children taken away by Child Protective Services. That didn't really make the news. Apparently there's a lot of uh, women or families or couples out there that have had children taken away by CPS. The reason she made the news is because she was pregnant again. And so of course the reporters and uh, the people running the news programs wanted to point out how crazy it was that she's already had five children taken away and here's number six coming along and they wanted to interview her. Are you concerned? Do you think Child Protective Service is going to come and take this one away? They wanted to get all of this controversy out in the news. Well, they actually followed the story and she ended up having the child at home. Because she had it at home, there was no birth certificate. There was no registration. Now what's interesting is because there's no birth certificate and no registration, Child Protective Services doesn't show up. Six months go by. No Child Protective Services. She figures she's in the clear, right? Hey, I got one past them. They missed this one. Then all of a sudden she goes to the doctor to get the immunization shots because what are they offering? Free immunization shots. All you have to do is bring your child in. The doctor looks at the doc's documents and says, well, wait a minute. You don't have a birth certificate for this child and without a birth certificate, we can't give you the free immunizations. So what does she do? She goes, what do I have to sign to get the free immunizations? So she fills out the application for the birth certificate, she signs it, and she gets the free immunizations, and wouldn't you know it, three days, 72 hours later, guess who's knocking at the door? Child Protective Services. This actually makes the news. Now, is this full disclosure? Possibly. We know that they try to disclose everything, right? That's their defense in the end. Hey, we told you how it worked. We told you everything. We didn't hide it, right? child gets taken away. Now, I'm sitting at home watching this whole story play out on the news and I'm thinking to myself, this is a perfect example of those rules of commerce. When she had created the child, she had the only title to it until she registered it. Once she registered it, she lost title. Now the one that has title says, oh, you're not doing a good enough job taking care of my collateral. Don't worry, we have an organization that's set up just to take care of our collateral. And that's what Child Protective Services did. They stepped in to take care of the collateral. We're not going to cover here today in this presentation uh, mortgages and deeds of trust, but they work along the same lines, believe it or not. You have a creation that you create and you have to register that creation or you have to give up title to it, but it's all by agreement and the remedies are available as well. Now for a child, once you register it, you can never regain title, unless of course you manage to get the one that you've registered it to to actually give you the title back. I've never heard of that. so. The bottom line is that child would have to grow up, reach the age of majority, and then choose for themselves what master they serve, right? This is one of my other favorite examples of how we were piecing together these rules of commerce. For those of you who don't recognize, that's Billy Lane. This is back that we see there. It's from the History Channel, a little show called Biker Build-Off. What happened, of course, is that uh, back in the day when they did this show, Billy had built this motorcycle in his shop. And at that time, they were man making the frames, and they didn't have VIN numbers on them, and they didn't have registration on them. They didn't have anything. He didn't even have the shop tags that you'd expect, like the dealer plates that you keep in your shop. If you create something, you put the dealer plate on it, you're good to go. And he wanted the tank to have lots of different facets to it. And he wanted that tank to look really, really fantastic, even if, though it didn't carry a lot of fuel. And uh, because of the way he welded it together, and the fact that he didn't temper anything, he didn't uh, take the stresses out of the metal, and the fact that the twin cylinder motor that's running it was running very rough as they always do, it tended to crack the tank and cause gasoline to leak on the motor and lo and behold it catches on fire. So here he is on the side of the road, it makes for great television, right, because you have all this great controversy, a big barbecue on the side of the road. And the police actually show up and they pull out their government issued fire extinguisher and they put out the flames, surprisingly quickly. And the, immediately after putting out the flames, which I assume is the service that the officer has just provided, the next thing he wants to know is, who am I going to bill for this service? 
So we asked Billy to see license, insurance, and registration. I know it sounds familiar. It goes back to one of our previous stories, right? What he's looking for is three contracts. And Billy turns to him in his drunken, more or less hillbilly manner, and he says, oh, we don't have any of that because I just made this. They actually cut to commercial, and we don't hear anything until we get back to com from commercial, and the announcer says that the police officer decided to take pity on poor Billy since it had actually caught on fire on the side of the road, and he did not issue him any tickets for the license, insurance, and registration, or for not having license, insurance, and registration. But from our point of view, through observation and through looking at the rules of commerce, we see that when he said, I just made this, that's actually the MSO. He established title to his creation. And because he has title, there can't be any requirement to wear a blue shirt on Tuesday or to have it registered or insured or licensed or anything else. And because there was no jurisdiction over it, the officer ceased. He stopped right then and there. There was no further commerce to conduct. Of course, today, even if you buy one of these kits, they try to sell you a frame that already has a VIN number that's already registered somewhere. And whether you're building it in your garage or whether you're buying it from a dealership, what you'll discover is all they're offering you is what's called an MCO, or Manufacturer's Certificate of Origin. Certificate always means copy of. It's never the original. An MSO, or Manufacturer's Statement of Origin, which is the true and lawful title, has to have a declaration of creation in it. It can be as simple as, I just made this. Or it can be Ford Motor Company declares that it created such and such vehicle and describes it. Whereas an MCO is very different. The certificate, which is to do with what has been registered and the title has been lost, that says that such and such manufacturer declares that this is the first time title has conveyed in ordinary commerce. Now, just like uh, uh, if you're looking at algebra, basic simple algebra, just like looking at scripture, which is basic algebra, if it says that this is the first time title has conveyed in ordinary commerce, then that has to mean inversely that the true title, the true lawful title, has already conveyed in extraordinary commerce. Now, we're not going to get into really, really great detail about how all that works, but realistically, if you show up at a dealership and you wish to acquire an interest in a vehicle or in a motorcycle or in a boat or anything of this nature, and you're not offering them true payment, they don't have to give you true title. So you show up at the company store where the company vehicles like Phillips Dodge or whatever other company, or like the Dutch East India Company or the United States of America, and they're selling you, look, this is all uh, company property here. And you have company script, these Federal Reserve notes. And since you're not paying in anything other than company script and it's not real money, we don't have to give you real title. And of course, if you're not smart enough to know the difference, we definitely don't have to give you a real title, right? Now, rule number one, you can only control that which you create. This happens to be the United States statutes at large. Now, codes and statutes are very interesting. To start with, they're copyright protected, which we're going to cover in the next slide. Also, if you create something, you get to control it. Now, if you come into this system of commerce, whether you're here on the earth as a living being or whether you've come into the actual system of commerce on the waters of commerce, in order to play in commerce, you have to be able to create something. Now, if you can't grow food and you can't create children and you can't create vehicles, what could you create that would allow you to play in commerce? How about paper? Yeah, you could become a paper merchant. You could become a law merchant. And you could even disclose to the whole world that what you have are pagan statues, like pagan idols, like pagan priests and pagan statues and pagan idols. And you could call it the United States statutes or United States pagan statues, however you want to call it. Or you could even go so far as to fully disclose to the whole world that it's a code. You could call it the motor vehicle code or whatever other code. You could tell them up front, eh, it's just an illusion. It's a code or it's a statutes. So oh, here's how they use it against you, and it has to do with these first two rules. Because they've created it and they haven't given you title to it, they get to control it. And they took that control one step farther. They actually copyright protected it. So when they charge you with a violation of a code or statute, what they're actually doing is they're coming after you for the copyright violation. 
because you didn't have permission to use that private copyright protected material. Now, a traffic ticket, they hand you a traffic ticket and they want you to sign it. And right on it will have the motor vehicle code that's allegedly been violated. Now, if you don't have the right to use that private copyright protected material and you sign that piece of paper, you have now violated the copyright. And that's actually what they come after you for. It has nothing to do with whether you were speeding. It has nothing to do with that stop sign. It has nothing to do with the real and the illusion or the fiction and the reality or any of that stuff. What they're saying is, look, it's our private copyrighted codes and statutes and it's the only thing we could create and this is how we plan commerce and you came along and violated our copyright. How about Disney? We're going to cover the magic of Disney a little bit later on, but for right now, here's Wally with this criminal copyright notice. How does it become criminal? Well, that motor vehicle code, United States code, code of federal regulation, boy, it's all an illusion, right? It's a code, it's a statue, it's a statute. These are the same pagans and the same pagan game that's been going on from Sumer through Babylon to present. And it's based on if you create something, you can control it until you give up title through registration. So you could maybe try to get them to register their codes or statutes under you. That'd be a great game. I bet they'd get really, really upset, kind of like uh, pulling the curtain back in The Wizard of Oz, right? Here's basic definition of money. And it's still in rule one, you can only control that which you create. And we've got a whole bunch of slides to look at for rule one because it's the basic beginnings of commerce. You have to create something in order to engage in commerce. Uh, whether you're skilled with your hands and you build houses or whether you fix vehicles or whether you create beautiful painting works of art, whatever it is, you have to create something in order to play in commerce. Now money, the basic definition of money is any medium of exchange. So anything that could be a medium of exchange in commerce can be loosely described as money with one exception. The one thing that can never under any circumstances be money is debt. An IOU, a promise to pay, can never at any time be money. Anybody uh, think that uh, there's debt floating out there that's perceived as money? What's really great is uh, the IRS's job is to punish you for lying. Because they're not the only ones. I mean, you know, all the codes, statutes, courts, everything. Basically, they're out there to punish us when we lie. So if somebody is giving you debt as income and you actually claim an earned income, when you receive this debt, you've lied and you will be punished financially for it. And that's where these taxations and all of these other cool things come from. Now, here's the one form of debt that's perceived as money that we're all familiar with. These are Federal Reserve notes. Notes, not money, not, not cash, right? Federal Reserve notes. And if you are the Federal Reserve and you create Federal Reserve notes, you get to control them. And here's the best part you get to control everything that engages with them in commerce. So any transaction that involves Federal Reserve notes, the Federal Reserve gets to control. Now, when the Federal Reserve prints, say, 100 Federal Reserve notes, they're charging 6% interest on what they've printed. That 6% is never printed. So it seems to be a self-imploding system, right? It's got to have a deficit of 6% for every Federal Reserve note that's printed because they're charging interest, but they're not printing the notes to pay the interest. So if that's the case, there must be another form of currency out there. And if debt can never be money, there has to be another form of currency, not necessarily money, but another form of currency. Now you could also call it cash uh, because cash is whatever is used as currency in that jurisdiction or in that realm or in that reality. Now here's another form of currency that we're all familiar with. Gold, whether it's in its natural form or whether it's in a minted bar or coin. Here's the problem though. 
If we apply the rules correctly, you can only control that which you create. If you did not create it, you cannot control it. I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't remember creating gold in any form. Since I didn't create it, I can't control it. And there have been a lot of these people who begin to learn a little bit of, these, of things like this, and uh, they immediately go out and try to engage in commerce using gold because somehow they instinctively know that the energy of a Federal Reserve note is negative. They're trying to steer away from it. And what happens when you go out there in commerce and you try to engage in commerce with gold? You get arrested for some reason. It's kind of shocking, right? I don't understand what happened. Well, what happened is you didn't create the gold, so you can't control it. You didn't create the Federal Reserve notes. You can't control them. And when you try to control something that you didn't create, it's a form of interfering with commerce, and that always has the same negative, horrible, ugly result. Now here's the natural form of gold. Once again, you can only control that which you create, whether it's in nugget form, whether it's a minted bar or a minted coin or whatever it is, you didn't create it. Even if you find the nugget and you hammer it into your own coin, you still didn't create it. The good news is you don't have to because you have your own unlimited form of energy that you can use anytime you want. And whenever we engage in commerce, they always want you to use your own form of energy first. Like for instance, if you go to open up a bank account, they want your signature. Or if you go to get a car loan, they want your signature. Get a house loan, they want your signature. If you've created something and they want you to give up title, they want your signature. So it turns out your signature is actually more valuable than the gold. It's more valuable than the Federal Reserve notes. It is yours because you created it. I remember when I was in grade school, they told you, you're going to learn how to do your own signature today. Why? Because if you don't have this little creation, you haven't created anything, how are you going to engage in commerce without a creation? So you create your signature, and that's really all you need to play in commerce, to engage in commerce. And if you think that maybe I'm a little off base, like a lot of people do, what you'll discover is that's always what they want first. They'll try to make you think that this mortgage exchange or this car loan exchange or this bank account is actually more valuable than your signature. But see if they give it to you without the signature. They want that signature. It is more valuable to them than anything else that's going on in commerce. They want it so badly that if you don't give it to them, they'll beat you up for it. Now, once again, if you create something, you get to play in commerce. This is a pagan idol, one of many. We saw some pagan statutes and pagan idols earlier on as well. If you create it, you can control it, and it allows you to engage in commerce. And for those that can't create something of value, they don't grow any food, they don't have any livestock, they can't create children, they don't make any cool motorcycles, they have to create something else and get everyone to worship it. Pagan idols, paganism. But if we're following those rules of commerce, we'll never fall into that trap, right? Here's one, this is absolutely classic. This is a promissory note. It's uh, from June 15, 1916. The dollar amount is $500. And you'll see the signatures on it. There's actually two signatures. This is incredibly valuable, right? We're tapping into the energy of two living beings when we create this. It even has the fully paid stamp on it because it's been completely redeemed and paid. And although we don't have all the specifics involved, we can, although it's tough to read from the screen, if you, you with the handout, you'll have the entire presentation and you can actually go through each slide and you can read what it says. And it says, the order of, pay to the order of, Savannah Realty and Investment Corporation. It has 500 and no dollars typed out and then it has it written out. And that's what you always have to do, right? If you're doing an order for money, you write it out in both numbers and letters, which it has. It has a date, which is March 14th, 1916. It has a paid to the order of party, which is Savannah Realty and Investment. And it has the living being signature that's creating this energy, that's creating this currency. This one was, this particular promissory note also happens to have a stamp attached to it, which is a postal stamp. And there's a whole lot involved in this that we're not actually going to cover here today, and I know you're disappointed, but I have to be careful that I don't interfere with commerce. I can steer you in the right direction, and later on, for those who've got the handouts, 
uh, with it include both caught the email as well as Skype information you can reach me you're welcome to ask me questions and in a more private setting I will do my best to answer them but there is a whole lot going on with this private form of payment or discharge and that stamp is really key to it and the signatures are really key to it now we have another pagan idol of course we've all seen various versions of these pagan idols in order to engage in commerce you have to create something if you grow food especially good food you're the best we love you Come out there and engage in commerce and feed everyone right but if you can't grow food and you can't create children and you can't create cool motorcycles then you have to create pagan statutes and get others to worship them and that's what they do gold chains around your neck nothing to me diamonds in your teeth nothing to me you could be rolling 22s nothing to me you're listening down with the truth now that's something to me know thyself seek and ye shall find i tell you this now it's in no african mind searching diamonds gold silver platinum them the kind of things illusions you fathom yeah they call it magic right your rap is tragic i know clever what they done fantastic come against me now you end up in a straight jacket i'll prove you illiterate one question the language now who's the pickle in the sandwich this kind of knowledge that you're hearing will damage you destroy you don't worry i'll employ you get you back on track so you can defend your own attack gold chain round your neck nothing to me diamonds in your teeth nothing to me you could be rolling 22s nothing to me down with the truth now that's something